Hi, Larry. Um, your grandchildren probably know little about your background in music. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and they might like to look at this now or well into the future when both of us have gone elsewhere. Uh, when, just tell us how you came to study the piano accordion. Uh, I'll just mention a bit about your mother. Your mother was keen on music and she could actually play some music on the piano in a kind of a way. Because I can remember playing for a Christmas party at, at the, the pre-school that we both went to. Uh, and, you know, she could play the tune so the children marched in and out of the doorway. Now, so, and she, in her later years, she had all these tapes of music she liked. So she's obviously very interested in music. So what, how did you get into the piano accordion? I think you uh, said she talked to you about what was easy and what was hard. And you tell me. Um, just uh, back to about my mother. She taught herself to play the piano without music and she did it all by ear. Um, and it was something that she taught herself to do when she was a child. So I did hear her play the piano and that's probably where I got, I, I thought that's where I would start playing the piano. But as it turned out, um, I, uh, for one reason or another, I started learning the piano accordion. Right. So what piano accordion did you get first? And you're only we 10. I started off with um, a, a 48 bass piano accordion. And it was Italian orange origin. Unfortunately, can't remember the exact brand name so long ago. Yeah. And I had that from... Uh, from 10, from age 10, and I grew out of it in age 12. Right. So, now, just let's go over it, just in case people don't know. Uh, the piano accordion has a keyboard on the right hand side that's like a piano keyboard, and on the left hand side, the bass. Could you just explain that? Yeah, the, um, that's right. The keyboard. It you know is limited to you know forty eight bass uh, piano accordion in size, and so is the number of forty eight means it has forty eight buttons for bass on the left hand side. That's how they classify what now, the size of the piano it, accordion. Is. Let's get it in someone's head, a young person's head, that the piano keyboard plays the melody. And the bass is a bit like a bass guitar. Is that right? Uh, it's a, uh, I, yeah, I don't think it looks like similar, it. That's something similar. Yeah, a, yeah, that's similar. And it was developed, the sound was developed in Europe. And a couple of my uh, <clears throat> grandchildren have European um, members of their family. And it was developed in Europe for what they call the umpa part music. Two of my grandchildren would know what that means. Yeah. Um, so the bass um, would be played like umpa pa umpa pa umpa pa with the black buttons on the left hand side, and that's where the piano accordion um, was invented. One for another word in Europe. But it essentially does the work of, say, a guitar in a band. That yes, yes. So in, it's, got, um, it's got the melody and it's got the bass part. Exactly, that's it. Whereas a guitar is either the lead or it's a bass guitar. It that's used correct, to do correct. both. Yes. But a piano, uh, can do, a piano can do both with the left hand way down the keyboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's it's fairly technical. So you started at ten. Uh, how often did you go to, to lessons? Went to lessons once a week, and the teacher would um, uh, would would give me music to practice for the next week's lesson. And how so many I, how many hours did you practice a week, or how many a day? Oh, how many how much a day? Probably two hours after school. I did my school homework 
and then practice for about two hours. Two day. hours? That's a lot. That was particularly when it was close to a Stepford's. Uh, outside of a Stepford's, maybe it was an hour a day. Um, I would practice. So um, it was very hard. The competition was very hard in Australia, in a Stepford's. Right. There were a lot of, lot of um, piano accordion children uh, from families that played in the Stepford's. Now, when did you find out that's what you liked? Did it happen straight away? No, it didn't. Um, when I uh, probably won the, the first couple of the Stepford's when I was 15, right. I started to realise there may be a future later on at 15 years old that I could join a band and maybe earn some money when right. I was 15. Now, when did you get, you see, so you, you had a small accordion first, we were talking about that, uh, and then at 13 or so, maybe 12, you got yeah, a... age 12, uh, my music teacher, whose name was Otto Weiss, Otto Weiss in Australia, um, and he had access, access to import Honer accordions from the Honer factory in Germany. And back then they were 260 pounds thereabouts, I can remember. Which was a lot of money. Then. A lot of money then that my mother paid. And it's the piano accordion that I still have. Right. All I, had to do, yeah, all I had to do later on was modify the accordion so it could be plugged into an amplifier. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So when you played in bands, um, it was plugged in like a guitar or a bass or like that. So, okay. You you won some of these at Stedfords and that must have been good. And you started to realise you were you were fairly good at this type of stuff. When did you start playing in a in a cafe, nightclub, or band? I, I suppose you played in an accordion band with Otto Weiss early on. Um, we play, uh, what what uh, Otto did, um, he got quartets made up that played in the Stedfords and he picked out a couple of the best quartets who played on, in, on the television on a Saturday morning. It was a... a a person, and I can't remember the name of the program on a Saturday morning, but we played on it twice and on television. And, um, uh, and, and so he, I don't know, I had a good reputation within the piano accordion and the music industry. So that's how we ended up playing on the television. So I would have been. Um, uh, probably 15 then, 14 or 15. And I played in the piano accordion quartet. Someone played lead, someone played second accordion, someone played third accordion, and I played what was called bass accordion. And mine was the only accordion plugged into the amplifier, and I played chords, which was like a an accompaniment to the other three. Right. Oh. Yeah. And it was, we won a couple of us Thetfords at that. Um, and we were only playing against our colleagues who were mostly younger or older than that. But um, that was quite fun. That was real fun practicing. There was two boys and two girls in the quartet. And we were all about the same age. I'd say we were the same age. Yeah. Right. Well, tell me about, you know, after you'd done that kind of work, you, you did do some work in cafes and yep. places. I, um, I first played in a band in 1963. Right. The band was called the Contiki Combo, and, and its name being Latin American by... 
type of music it played. It played in Latin American restaurants and uh, a dance studio that was run by a known uh, dance teacher uh, of teaching students Latin American dancing. So that's where I got the start. And um, the Kentucky Combo finished in 1970. So as a group, we were together for seven years. Um, and then from, uh, I played in restaurants, solo, uh, one noted restaurant called the Chianti. I remember that. I think I went there once. It was, it was a, a restaurant where socialites went and if they just wanted a meal and I played with a drummer and we played for well, three or four years, um, three nights a week. And I worked uh, five and a half days a week in the, my daily job. Uh, so I, I played uh, after the Chianti gig, as it was called. I played in two other restaurants, uh, one notably in um, Maroubra. And the owner of the restaurant had a, a quarter box. And a quarter box being looking like a piano accordion, but with the couplers, which is a device of uh, buttons or oversized buttons called couplers on the right hand side of the piano accordion. With a quarter box, you could press it, shut the bellows, and still the sounds would come out. You could have a sound like a hammered organ or because you could play chords and that type of thing and that belonged to the restaurant. And I was able to get the gig because I was able to play it. And I enjoyed that. And quarter boxes, uh, uh, the lowest cost one would have been at that time probably Fifteen hundred dollars. A lot of money. A lot of money. Yeah. So, um, and then I, um, I retired from from playing in 1970. Um, in that period of time, I'd met Nana. We worked in the same place, and. Um, I'd played the latter part of the 60s to save up money so I could pay, buy a block of land, pay off the GT Cortina that I had and help money towards the wedding. Uh, so when we got married in 1970, I, I had fully given up playing professionally the piano recording. Right. And the next time I played was when I was age 40 at a Baptist church near Greystones. Right. Uh, as a backup for people singing in the church type of thing. But as I say again, I gave up professional playing of the piano accordion when I got married. Right. Well, look, Larry, here's another question. Um, young people in Australia probably think the piano accordion is an unusual instrument. They're into guitars and things like that. Just tell them about the other countries where the piano accordion, if not king, is close to being king. For instance, in, in Italy... Well, in Italy, it's very well, Germany, Germany and Italy, between Germany and Italy, they manufacture probably 90% of the piano accordions. And the music that's written is for 
I say European, but predominantly started in Germany, and and the same as in Italy. A lot of the the polka type music and umpapa music comes in Germany, and the Italian music is different. Uh, but the the piano recording doesn't look out of place or didn't look out of a place in those two countries. But in Australia, it was out of place. Um, but with the aid of amplification with the piano accordion, it could fit in playing with bands uh, as a, a, a backup, playing chords if you could do it, play solo in different parts of the the music and that type of thing, and it didn't look out of place. Yeah. Well, what, I, what I'm getting around to saying is in, in Italy and Germany, I don't know how popular it is now, but when you were playing, learning, it was a, a greatly popular, popular instrument for beer halls, cafes, it, it was played widely, uh, just like the guitar is now. And it may yes. still be very popular too. In Russia, it's popular. Hmm. In Macedonia, it's really popular. That's Macedonia is just above Greece. Uh, it, it's used for dance music at weddings uh, and, and things like that. So... Um, as you said, amplification became a bit of a problem in big halls, but that quarter vox started to solve that. But then as we grew up, the guitar became more and more popular, didn't it, for bands? Yes, it did. And but I was fortunate, uh, probably my age, in the 60s, in restaurants, they didn't have live music of any sort. They, the recorded music that they had in restaurants was very low in quality as compared to today's music in a restaurant. So there were a lot of restaurants that were looking for one or two piece musicians to fill that void. So yeah. um, that, was a, that was a timing of my age. <laughs> yeah, and, and the thing was, too, uh, as with a guitar, a, a smaller piano accordion than yours, someone could stroll around the, the restaurant and, and play for each table, uh, you know, a song. And music halls were very popular in, in Sydney for a while, and uh, they were often run by non-Anglo-Europeans and there was often a strolling piano accordion player who'd go around in the in the interval and play. That's right. Yeah. So um, it, it had versatility, and in some ways, uh, if a piano accordion person came to your table, they they were a kind of actor as well as a musician because it was it was a a kind of dramatic instrument where you pulled it in and out and moved around and uh, you could sing to it, of course, as well. Um, so, but I, I just want to make that point for younger people that don't know much about or rarely have seen a piano accordion. Um, have you got anything more to say? Because you know more about it than me. Yeah, well... Um... Out of all the places that I played, the Chianti had to be the, the top pick of them all. It was the most popular restaurant and high end. Um, people went there, politicians, um, other musicians went there, people from the media. And um, they would ask you to play their favourite tune. And if I played it twice, they, they, and it was a fair bit of money, then they'd give me $10 to play the piece again. And there was a couple of celebrities that would, that would go to the candy as regulars. 
and um, they'd say, Larry, would you play that again, please? And so I'd play something after, and then I'd play the, um, and it was usually if they had their part, we call them partners now, if they had their wife or fiance, it'd be some romantic tune they'd ask me to play. And the, other play. the other interesting thing is younger people with great little speakers and what have you these days, until about 1970, recorded music through speakers in a cafe or restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't very good, was it? So live music really gave that quality that people couldn't get otherwise. That's right. That's it. What I was saying at, at, at that period of time, the restaurants, you went there to eat and if there wasn't a, a live band or whatever, you ate and you left. But if a place like the Chianti and the, the one at Maroubra and that, people stayed nearly all night. It was, a, it was an, an outing. So they'd have dinner and maybe get up and have a dance and uh, and that sort of thing. Or, or if you organised a floor show, you did it. The one of that at Maroubra. And um, because the quarter box was so versatile, you could play in. Right? Yeah. So, but after that, um, they were all guitar orientated uh, bands. But, um, I played a lot for the other place outside of restaurants and dances uh, were European. Uh, the um, a couple of the soccer clubs who were had Europeans as members and players. They had European bands that had a piano accordion in it. So I played, did a few gigs at the Croatian soccer club, which was in Redfern. Um, and all those people loved the piano accordion. So there was about two or three functions a year with the Croatian soccer club. And um, the band was made up with the saxophonist, saxophonist, piano accordion, a bass player and a guitar player and a drummer. And we all didn't know each other until we had a rehearsal. <laughs> right. And it, it went really well. Yeah. I, I suppose the big thing is, until 1970, most of the people coming to Australia as migrants were either British or continental Europeans, particularly from the south of Europe, but not exclusively. But after 1970, most of the migrants tended to come from Asia or India. And so they didn't have the same wish for the piano accordion. Um, the Indians do have a kind of piano accordion, but it, but it's clearly different. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So and it's, but uh, so yeah, that that so the 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 actual demand for the piano accordion music did didn't grow anymore after about no. nineteen seventy. And but the, the the one thing I forgot to mention uh, was the main the main reason I gave up the piano accordion was that I got to a crossroad and I was offered a job to play on Hayman Island. Right. So I would have had to give up my day job, go to Hayman Island and play and Hayman Island had a nightclub. Right. And I would play from twelve PM till three or four o'clock in the morning. But at the same time I was contemplating engagement and getting married. Yeah. So I mean, consequently, I had to make a, make a decision. Was I going to be a tool specialist or a player of the piano accordion and, and marry a lovely woman? So uh, we all know what decision I made. <laughs> okay. We'll just finish on this note. Uh, even though you stopped playing around about 1970, uh, you learnt for 15 years and played, learnt and played for 15 years. Uh, what what do you feel the benefit of doing that was for you personally? Uh, you know, obviously you got an appreciation of music, but were there any other benefits uh, to you as a person? Um, appreciation of music, number one. I, I just felt that it, 
I, I needed to do to do it. And instead of being the piano, it turned out to be the piano accordion. And I enjoyed the the comradeship from the um, music teacher and the students that I went to the music with. Um, some of the Stepford playing was tough. It was a bit nerve wracking, but we got out of that eventually. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, very demanding. But um, um, and then I looked at it as as I said earlier in the notes. It was a way of earning extra money to buy a block of land, to pay off the car, and to, to put money aside for when we um, got married. Without the music, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Right. Um, so successfully, uh, of saving that amount of money. Do you think it gave you some confidence? You, you were really fairly confident anyhow, more confident than me. Uh, in well, ways. Um, yeah, of putting all the, the end part together, getting engaged and having work from at nights at two jobs was a bit telling. Imagine working five and a half days a week, and in yeah. cases three or four nights a week on top of that, and you wouldn't get home till two o'clock in the morning. You can get up and then go to work for five and a, five and a half days, but. Um, in the finish, it, I could. I, I was only 20, 21, so I was able to cope with it. Yeah. Um, but in the long, at the end of the day, it gave us a fair amount of money for a start to buy a house, and um, so there was something bricks and mortar I could look at and say, "Well, we did that when we bought our first house in." Um, Next in, in, in um, uh, Greystones. Uh, so we'd say, we'd, and at that particular time in Greystones, and this is for the grandkids, uh, the banks weren't too kindly to young people trying to get a mortgage to borrow money. So we changed, we, to, we changed from the Commonwealth Bank and joined the, the um, building society and were able to get a loan because we'd saved up this amount of money so that we could buy, put a deposit on our first house. And I think I was, I was 23 or 24 and Barbara would have been about 22, sorry, 21 or 22. So we were able to buy our first house because of the extra money that came in to us through the piano recording. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll finish on that note. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll ring you up in a minute and talk about things.